Welcome and Sat Nam. My name is Lana Labonte and welcome to my channel and welcome to my living room. Today I'm going to guide you through a practice that is very effective in a very short amount of time to really shake up and move out stagnant stuck energy. Because essentially in these times we need to move our bodies. When our nervous systems are overloaded, we feel fried, burnt out. In any situation, when you feel like you're going to lose your ish on someone or as a result of something, that's when you need to turn to these tools. Because we need to reinforce, strengthen, and create resistance in our physical being. And that's usually through exerting exercises that push and test us. That's how we strengthen our nervous systems. Our nervous systems are essentially our wiring, our circuitry, just like a computer. And when we're fried, we're burnt out. That's just showing us where we're not strengthened, where we're not resilient, we're not bouncing back, kind of like a spring. You need a little spring in your step. And if you think in terms of circuitry and how when you feel you're overwhelmed or overloaded or something's too much for you and you can't deal with it right now. These are the kinds of meditations that you want to turn to because they're going to strengthen you. And just like any electrical circuit needs to be grounded, so do you. So the sign of a weak nervous system is when you're about to freak out when you want to act out, when you're itchy or bitchy, or you're going to lose it on someone. You know, traffic, that's always the best test of our <laughs> patience, right? So when we have a short wire, a short fuse, we're ready to take it out on someone. We need to ground into the earth just as much, which is why it's so good and beneficial to get out to nature, to barefoot, to earth, they call it, to earth, put your feet on the earth earthing or grounding. We are no different because we are also walking energy, frequency. We are the frequent keys. And so in order to harness our own energy, we need to ground it. We're not meant to be up in the ethers. So if you're airy, fairy, flighty, or maybe you just don't feel all in your body, well, that's where you need to get back in it. So we came into this human form to have these human experiences, not to go into escapism and try to fly away. Don't get me wrong, sometimes that's fun too. But if you wanna be more effective in your life, you need to ground physically into your, your body, your being, and you need to shake the shit out. So today, we're gonna do the meditation for the fists of anger. This is to move the negativity, the anger, whatever it is that's like got under your skin, we're going to take it out from underneath there. We're going to use a breath. We're going to create fists with our hands and the thumbs represent the ego. So we're going to place the thumbs at the base of the pinkies, wrap the fingers around them. You're going to put enough pressure to where it's like, ah, that kind of hurts, but we're not breaking our fingers. This is just to keep us in our bodies. It's considered this your grounding because what you're doing essentially, thumbs representing the earth and then wrapping around them is engaging the circuitry, is the grounding for you as you are seated. So first I'm going to explain it. And then we're going to tune in and we're going to do it. It's experiential. The total time on this is three minutes for the whole process. Watch your mind. Be in awareness. Be the observer. See if your mind tries to talk you out of it. Notice if your mind starts going into a crazy tailspin and wants to eject, run, hide, stop. See if you can push it through. Because on those, those pivotal times in life, do you ever notice when you just pushed over a little bit further, when you thought you had to give up, you couldn't do it anymore? It wasn't life or death. It was just exhaustion or the mind getting out of control, trying to convince you, I can't do this, especially when we're working with the arms. The arms are 
essentially a reflection of the mind. The armpits are the garbage pit of the mind. So when we use the arms, we're actually shaking up the, the stuff up in the mind. So whenever you put your arms up, everybody's always like, oh my gosh, my arms, how much longer? Oh, ooh, my back, my shoulders, this. First, I want you to get in the proper posture. Second, we're gonna be doing this breath through the O mouth. You're gonna make a stiff O and you're not gonna move the cheeks. So it's gonna be in and out of the mouth. You're gonna keep the lips stiff. And while we're moving the hands, cause it's gonna be like a backstroke, you're gonna be going and it may sound like a whistle, depends on how your breathing is, but I don't wanna see any puffing of the cheeks. So just ch keep checking in with yourself. And notice if you are going in and out of the nose at any point and just try to maintain the focus because if you keep the focus on the moment, See, when you engaged in the breath work and you keep the attention on the breath, then the mind can't go off in a ta crazy tailspin. Now, most of us who try to multitask as it is, you can't do too many things at once. So this is the benefit. So we're going to in and out of the mouth. We're gonna be doing like a backstroke, but I want you to first set yourself. Now, while we're doing this, our eyes will be closed and focused at the third eye. So you will have your eyes closed. Nobody's gonna be watching you, especially if you found yourself in a nice quiet space wherever you're at. You can always come back to these, these meditations because they'll be right here for you. Now, I'm gonna remind you while you're doing this to bring up the anger, whatever gets under your skin, Bring up anything that you have resentment towards, hostility, anger. Think about anything that makes you angry, makes you feel weird, commotional, anything just crazy out of the blue, like, oh my God, this one did that. Something even simple. If it caught you off guard and it triggered you, that's where I want you to focus your attention and energy. So you'll be sitting in easy pose or on a chair I want you to adjust yourself. Make sure there's nothing obstructing you around your body because you will be doing this backstroke. And I want you to notice where you're feeling it, but don't turn around and let your mind talk you out of it. When you think you're ready to give up, three minutes is not very long. Don't give up before the miracle. Hold out for as long as you can. Keep that breath going. Keep that focus on the breath. Let the power of the breath work you through it. Use that energy. Harness the breath. That is our life force. It's a maintainer, the sustainer. The more you can focus on your breath, <laughs> pumping on the navel on the exhale, <laughs> use that as your fuel. So even if you think you don't want to do it anymore or you can't do it anymore, do it even stronger, faster, harder. Make it angry. Use every fiber of your being to conjure it all up and use and harness that anger to fuel you through this process. Again, it's only three minutes, but notice your mind. At the very end, I'm gonna cue you to interlace your fingers and turn the palms straight up. And I want you to inhale and hold the breath. It's gonna be 10 seconds. And you're gonna reach up through those armpits, up through the palms of the hands. And I want you to focus your eyes at the top of the crown of the, looking up through the tops of the hands. And just imagine all that energy circulating, integrating. You're squeezing all of your muscles and you're gonna surround yourself in a white healing light and then you're going to exhale and you're going to maintain the posture. We're going to do this three times in total. Inhaling, holding, stretching, elongating, squeezing, holding the breath. Imagine yourself surrounded in white light, healing light, and then exhaling. And we'll do that a third time. So that's basically what we're doing. Very, very simple. But notice the mind. It'll make things more challenging because it'll create a story to talk you out of it. It's the nature of the mind is to keep you safe. But this isn't life or death. So remind yourself, you can do this so that when you go out in the world, you're much calmer, that you can claim yourself, is what we say. You calm yourself, you claim yourself, and you have to do things like this to go through. You gotta go through the discomfort 
to find your strength, your power, and your, your comfort. Because on the other side of the obstacle, the challenges of life, resides your destiny, your purpose. So go through the pain, chase the pain, because the pain has purpose. And I'm not talking about pushing through a physical uh, injury. Notice the difference, because there's a difference between inflammation that is chronic and inflammation that is muscle strain. Like your body's like, oh, we're stretching and we're lengthening and we're, we're moving muscles and, and joints and ligaments that we don't normally move. And so with practice comes progress. So keep coming back to this and provide me feedback as to how this assists you in life, your day-to-day -day life. Like you may want to do this for a good 21 to 40, 40 days to see how effective it is in your life because just doing a practice consistently every single day, doesn't matter what time you do it. If you do it the same time, it becomes part of your routine and your habits. And when we develop good, consistent habit, habits, routine, rep repetition is the key to our destiny. But it has to be dedication and devotion that comes from within. All right, so first we're going to tune in with the Adi Mantra. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. If you've never done this before, don't worry. If you do this enough times, you'll get used to it. First, notice your posture. Before you start this, I want you to sit comfortably, whether you're on a bolster or you're on a chair. I want there to be a slight pelvic tilt of the hips. Your legs should be supported under you on the earth or your feet on the ground if you're in a chair. If you're on a bolster, which I highly recommend no matter how seasoned of a practitioner you may be, because this allows a slight pelvic tilt, like you want a natural S-curve in the spine. Each vertebrae neatly stacked one over the other from the tailbone up to the crown of the head like someone's pulling a string. Feel that regal pulling up, the elongation, the lengthen and the strengthen. And then I want you to roll the shoulders up to the ears, let them glide down the back, opening up that heart in those lungs. There's a slight squeeze together, but not to the point where you're like, Ugh! and letting the shoulders drop away from the ears, maintaining, if your chin is forward, notice if your alignment is jutting forward with the head, that just tells you that you're in your head a lot. Tuck the chin like a little turtle, keeping and maintaining this parallel, no tilting down, no tilting up, there should be a slight Jalahanda Bandha, which is the neck lock. You should feel a little pressure in the neck. And then I want you to notice that the ears are over the shoulders and the shoulders over the hips. Now breathing long, slow, and deep just to set yourself. Inhaling all the way deep down into the pelvic floor, expanding the belly, the ribs expand, and the chest lifts. On the exhale, the chest lowers, the ribs contract, and the belly pulls in and up at the navel point toward the back of the spine and inhale as you follow the breath into your body imagining how it's nourishing and entering every cell of your being and then on the exhale just feel a softening in the jaw like a cascade of the waterfall of breath going all over from the top all the way down softening the neck the shoulders shoulder blades down the back, keeping that heart lifted like someone's pulling up on the front of your ribs. And then bring the hands to heart center. Start briskly rubbing them together to create friction and also to balance the hemispheres of the brain. When we bring the hands together, it's bringing the left and right hemispheres of the brain so that we can balance and rewire our circuitry. Thumbs are in that little notch in between the breasts. Inhale to synchronize the breath. Again, it's Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, all on one breath, three to five times. Inhale to synchronize the breath. Exhale, slowly release, relax. Inhale. Exhale. Notice we're in no rush to be anywhere. Inhale. Exhale, soften, relax, release the jaw. And on the next inhalation, we'll chant the Adi Mantra three to five times. Inhale. Om Namah.
suspend the breath pull the anus rect the sex organs the navel point draw that energy up the spine it's called the mula band squeezing pulling it all up relaxing the shoulders away from the ears while maintaining this breath when you're holding the breath if you feel you need to let go just inhale a little sip more suspend that breath hold it hold it here you can do this and then exhaling slowly releasing the root lock releasing the hands down just giving yourself a moment to set your intention to release and let go of any negativity, any anger that you have stored up within all of your cells because they have memory. Our issues lie in our tissues and we're here to clear it out, to cleanse it, to flush, to give us a clean slate. Inhale together. Exhale, opening the eyes. If you have any jewelry on that you don't want to be flinging around, remove that now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over it again. We're going to take the thumbs and touch at the base of the pinky, which is the mercury mound. We're going to wrap the fingers all around the big, the thumb and you're gonna feel pressure. I want you to keep pressure because sometimes when we're in pain, that makes us even more angry, doesn't it? So again, this is your grounding because this is the earth that we're holding on to. The thumb is also your ego. So we gotta keep the ego in check. So we have the hands and fists wrapped around the thumbs. What it's gonna look like is the eyes will be closed. You're gonna focus the third eye. Maintain the posture. Keep the heart open the entire time. You're gonna in and out of the breath, in and out of the mouth in an O. No pumping of the cheeks. I want them to keep straight. <laughs> Stiffen those lips in a very powerful O breath. And it's almost like a breath of fire, equal inhale, equal exhale. And this is gonna clear out because it's a very cleansing breath. And it also stimulates the sympathetic nervous system which is that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. So this is why we're doing it. To strengthen the nervous system, you gotta engage it. So it's gonna look and sound like this. <laughs> Try to maintain the chest lifted, the shoulders rolled back, and really moving the arms because that's gonna move the energy. And try to push through, it's only three minutes. At the very end, I will cue you to inhale and bring the hands with the palms facing up, interlace, stretching it up. I will cue you and walk and talk you through it. Now, again, this is your gift for you and everyone around you. This is what we do so that we can be most effective for ourselves because we have to fill our cup before we can pour into others. So make sure you're in your easy pose or sitting in a chair. We're gonna come into the posture now. Again, bring the hands into fists, wrap around and begin.
keep going keep the chest lifted keep that o breath even speed it up if you can Conjure up anything angry, anything that makes you really upset, commotional, fitful, fearful, whatever it is, weird, angry, really just pound it out. Speed it up. Think of all those people that really piss you off. Traffic, your parents, your kids, your spouses, your friends, whoever it is, really imagine them and just beat it out using your body. Use that breath, use that fuel, power it up. Speed it up, keep going, you're almost there. last 20 seconds really make it as powerful fast as you can power it out strong strong <laughs> inhale interlace the fingers palms facing up to the sky squeeze Hold it, hold it, hold it. Imagine yourself surrounded by healing white life. Exhale out the O breath. <sighs> Inhale through the O. Hold it. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Imagine yourself surrounded in that wild, strong, white healing light. Feel the shake. If you feel the shake, that's a great sign that you're recalibrating, resetting your nervous system. Out the O breath. <sighs> Inhale. Stretch, 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 squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale out the O breath. <sighs> Inhale. Reach. Exhale. Sweep your arms slowly down by your sides, brushing your aura. Keep and maintain your eyes closed, hands in Gyan Mudra on your knees or in your lap, palm in palm. Just breathe naturally and notice what you're feeling. Allow the energy to integrate, circulate. Inhale, suspend the breath. Exhale. Again, inhale. 
exhale last time inhale exhale and just notice what are what came up for you what thoughts what sensations how does your body feel if you're not used to doing these types of meditations and breath work you may notice you have a little bit of a oxygenated brain will say because we feel a little dizzy or lightheaded when we re enter into the mind we oxygenate the brain so if we're depleted of our oxygen our life force then our brain is being um, depleted we can brain cells die because we don't have enough oxygen just like cells in the body need to be oxygenated so does our brain so if you do notice you have a little lightheadedness with the exception of different types of blood pressures breathing is the best way to heal the body but I'm not a practitioner of any of of the medical sort so always consult your your medical professional or whoever it is you trust if anything you should trust yourself I'm here just to guide and the whole purpose of these types of meditation is so that you can claim yourself so that you don't have to outsource or ask others for advice or guidance because ultimately our body is our own guidance system perfectly designed to communicate in the way that you need for you you need to listen we all do and I can only speak from my personal experience so after this meditation just just notice take some notes do some journaling Maybe it brought up some old anger that you didn't even realize was down in the depths. You know, we got to clear out the dregs. And so whenever you want to do this type of practice, when you're feeling at your edge, like you're going to lose it, come back to this practice. Most of the times underlying everything is our need for things to be a certain way instead of accepting them as they are. And it's okay if you're not okay with it. Like, allow that. You don't have to be okay with everything, but notice if you're not okay with it and own it so that it doesn't own you. So when things aren't the way we want them to be, that's just showing us where we have attachments and it's okay. With that awareness, now you have the key and the mindfulness so the full mind gets dumped out. This is what meditation is all about. It's clearing out the garbage pit, all that junk, the monkey mind mental floss as I like to call it and we like to use the breath because it's what clears it out the best so let me know what you think I really hope this served you let's bring our hands together for one long Sat Nam to close it out inhale together Sat Nam Hmm, anger is essentially drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. So just remember you are also the medicine and you can alchemize that. So we want to turn the lead of the anger into the gold of our path and our purpose. If you like this video, please share because sharing is caring and be so kind as to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss any more of these types of videos. If you like my content, just keep on following. And I'm just grateful that you showed up for you today. So much love, many, many blessings from my heart.